Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'd. I wanted to talk a little bit about shurut fi nikah. These are the conditions regarding when a uh, a person wants to get married and the conditions inside of the marriage. So there's a difference between shurut nikah and shurut fi nikah. So we're talking about shurut fi nikah. And shurut nikah, these are things like that you uh, having a, uh, a wali, having witnesses, those preconditions to marriage. You know, and, and that the, the there's a... There's a that the husband and wife, they agree, you know, to get married and, and you know, to, to cement that, that contract. But shurut finnika, which I want to talk about, this is related to conditions placed on the husband or placed on the wife prior to marriage regarding what takes place in the marriage. Let me give you some examples. So... In our studies, the Sheikh mentioned some of the shurut sahih, some of the correct sound conditions. Uh, one thing, of course, is sakna. This is her right, that she has the right to be housed. That's her, her haq. So that's what I, when I said previously. For example, if a man's going to take a second wife in a, in a situation like that, that that woman, the second wife, she has the right to be uh, provided a house if she so desires. You know, if she desires it right then, then before you can have relations and stuff, then you've got to provide that house if she stipulates that. So these are stipulations during, for prior to the marriage for that have to be in place in the marriage. So the fact that she has a place to live. So if she stipulates, a man wants to take a second wife and the sec new wife says, hey, I want my own house. I don't want you to, I don't want to share a house even if you have a big house and it's got two floors or whatever and, you know, or, whatever the situation, I don't want to live like that. I don't want to live close to her, you know, whatever, okay? Then she has that right. That's her haq, because she stipulated before nikah. Another thing is a khadama, a servant. If, for example, the woman is used to having a servant prior to marriage, she was a wealthy woman and she's used to having a servant, and she stipulates that before marriage that she wants a servant, then after you marry you decide, no, I'm not going to give her a servant. I, you know, I, I, that's just a waste of money. You can't. That was her haq because she stipulated that and you agreed to it. And it's a lawful, sound condition. Okay? So that's shurut fi nikah. These are conditions uh, made prior to nikah for the institution, inside the institution of marriage. Another thing, wadifa. If you agree with the, the, the wife prior to marriage... That, you know, she says, I want to, to, uh, to work. You know, I'm a woman who likes to work. If she stipulates that and you've agreed to that, then when you marry and she wants to work, she wants to take a job, then you have to let her work. As long as it's in a, a halal environment. You know, she's not working with haram and she's not working around a bunch of men and things like this. She's working in a halal and lawful environment. Another thing is darasa. If a woman, she wants to complete her college, for example, and you agreed to that prior to nikah, then, and she stipulated that, then you have to meet that. If you do not meet that, then she has the right after, when you're married, to ask for divorce. She is the, That's her haq, because you guys stipulated that. That is the akt. That was the part of the contract, and now you're not fulfilling the contract, so she has the right to get... Uh, get a khula or get a divorce or what have you. So those are some just some examples. So as Sheikh Ali Bassam mentions, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he mentions that shurut fi nikah, kisman, he mentions that it's two types. There's the correct sound type and there's a batal type. The sound type is one that it doesn't um, it doesn't go against the the the, the marital uh, contract. And it doesn't contra contradict it. And of course, it doesn't contradict the Sharia. 
and it is uh, something that is agreed upon by the two, the husband and the wife, with a uh, sound and righteous purpose, I guess you could say, or a a sound purpose, a sahi purpose, and the other type of condition in nikah, shurut fi nikah, is batal, is the batal kind. This is the kind it goes against, it it, it goes, uh, it's not in accordance with the, the contract, the marital contract that you agreed to. And regarding this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in, uh, or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in authentic hadith, قَالْ الْمُسْلِمُونَ عِنْدُ شُرُوتِهِمْ إِلَّا شَرْتٍ حَرَّمَ حَلَالًا أَوْ أَحَلَّ حَرَامًا so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a hadith, and it's not mentioned where we can, uh, where this hadith is found, but he mentions that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the the Muslims, they are on their conditions. You know, they follow, they honor their conditions, as long as it's not a condition which is making that which is lawful lawful, and that which is. Uh, unlawful or that which is uh, as long as it's not making uh, unlawful the lawful or making lawful the unlawful and so those are that is the general rule the Prophet ﷺ laid that down that qaida that if as long as uh, you know you're not making that which is unlawful to be lawful and that which is lawful to be unlawful, then you're in accordance with the Sharia and it is a sound condition. An Uqbat ibn Amr radiallahu ta'ala anhu qa qala Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna haqqa shuruta inna haqqa shuruti and Tufu bihi ma astahlaltum bihi al furuj. Ruahu Bukhari wa Muslim. In this hadith of the Prophet, وسلم, the hadith of Uqbat ibn Amr, radiallahu ta'ala, who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the most worthy condition of honoring is that which makes it lawful the private parts meaning you know for in merit marriage you know so meeting the conditions of marriage and with this before we get into the benefits of the hadith i want to mention a, a benefit the that are something related to this one condition which is be becoming more common in certain circles where women are stipulating that they do not agree to their husband taking another wife okay and they make this a shurut fi nikah the ulama they differ with regards to this is this a sound shart or not uh, and the sheikh when we study with sheikh uh, sheikh abdullah bin hajar he said that the the haq the truth in this matter is that a woman can ask for divorce in the situation if she stipulated prior to nikah. Prior to nikah, she said, do not, you know, this is a condition. I want you to honor and, and you agreed to not marry another wife. Then she has the right, if you marry another wife, to then be, uh, uh, to get divorce and ask for divorce or ask for khula because you did not honor the condition, the shart fi nikah. <coughs> so the ulama, they differ over this. Some ulama say no, because, um, you know, uh, it's an intrinsic right in, you know, in Islam that the man can marry more than one wife and so forth, and they have their arguments for that, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But the important thing is that we should honor the conditions of nikah. If you agree before marriage to not take another wife, you've made that a condition, you agreed to what she said, you signed on the dotted line, so to speak, then you should honor that, you know, and, and, and not marry, take another wife without her consent, so to speak. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, if you've agreed to that prior. Some of the benefits of this hadith, 
is this hadith shows us that it's an obligation to honor the conditions that are uh, sound conditions that uh, of nikah that the husband and wife had have agreed agreed upon for the marriage and things and then the sheikh mentioned for uh, the right with he gave some examples with regards to the right of a woman is that uh, if she for example makes that a condition I want a very high mahar and you've agreed to that then you have to give her that whatever that high mahar I want a million dollars okay and you really liked her and you agreed that you that's her hawk you have to give her that million dollars you have to one day come up with that million and and pay off uh, your mahar because that was what you agreed upon and that is and it was lawful for her to ask for that uh, some other examples he mentioned if she says you know I want my own house whatever the situation and you agreed upon that or I want you to buy me a house and you agreed to that you've got to come up with that uh, or in, in a specific place she says I want a house on the beach in Yemen I want a house in Palm Springs whatever you have to honor that right if you agreed to that uh, some example with re regards to from the position of the man for example if he stipulates that you know you must be uh, a virgin and then he comes to find out that she had made a mistake and she wasn't a virgin uh, when he married her then he has the right to divorce her because there was deception or uh, you know they say Nusab, you know, even the fact that, you know, she was of a certain tribe or a certain uh, uh, line lineage. And if they stipulated that and come to find out she wasn't, then that's a means for divorce because they, he stipulated that, she agreed to that, and then there was deception. Uh, and those are just some examples the Sheikh mentioned. Another benefit of this hadith is that it is an obligation to honor the uh, agreements that you enter in and completely all the, the conditions of the, the contract. And this should, of course, be regarding the benefit or the maslaha of the one of the, the, the partners. You know, So one of the partners has stipulated that and the other partner agreed to it. And so this is obviously for the benefit of one of those partners. Another benefit of this hadith is uh, the sheikh said that this hadith is a general, but this hadith is, is now it becomes restricted from another hadith. Another hadith restricts that hadith, makes it uh, you know, it, it restricts the meaning of that hadith. Whereas before it was a general hadith that, hey, the, uh, you know, whatever shurut of nikah that are halal that you agreed upon, you have to honor. You know, as long as it's, 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 uh, you know, you know, that it's lawful and it made it the permissibility for the, uh, to have, you know, the, the private parts permissible, meaning nikah. The Sheikh said that's general. Another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ shows that it restricts this hadith to certain aspects that are not permissible. And here's one of the things he said. So the Sheikh said, be mithla hadith, he said what restricts this hadith is, for example, like the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he said, La yuhil li, 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 li imra'atin tas'al talaq ukhtaha. That is not permissible for a woman to ask for the divorce of her sister, meaning that this hadith is restricted. So, for example, if a woman was going to marry a, a, a man and he already had a wife, and she says, one of my conditions is that you divorce your other wife when you marry me, when I marry you, you know, or, 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 or soon thereafter or whatever. That is an impermissible condition. Why? Because now we have taqyid. We have it restricted. That general 
text is now restricted with another text which shows that that is not permissible to ask for something like that. So it is not permissible due to the other hadith which illustrates that that is not a permissible thing to ask for the divorce of another wife as, as the Prophet Wasallam mentioned in that hadith. Uh, another benefit of this hadith Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned about this hadith and Shaykh Ali Bassam uh, brought this statement of Shaykh al-Islam he said and that it's correct that, and this is what uh, most of the, the evidence that Imam Ahmed brought, and also this is what most of the Salaf were upon, is that it is an obligation in the contract for every one of the partners a right upon the other Things like nafaka, you know, uh, like if if they stipulated, of course, to 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 pay, um, to to provide, and to have relations. If she stipulated before marriage, she said, "Hey, I want to, uh, you know, have my, you know, sexual enjoyment, special enjoyment, I guess, or certain things." She stipulated that ahead of time, you know, it has to be twice a day or something like this, if he's able to do so or what have you. Then, Shaykh al-Islam is saying, you know, in a, in a, you know, to so enjoyment and also um, housing for the woman. And, you know, if the man stipulates, hey, I need a massage every day or whatever the situation is or he wants the... And it's not, uh, that, that he, that he stipulates these things, but he doesn't stipulate the amount of time. So going back to what I just said, I need to correct that. Sheikh al-Islam is saying that not restricted to a particular amount. So the woman, from what I'm understanding here, she cannot stipulate the amount of times, hey, I want to have relations twice a day or three times a day or something. But rather, that goes back to the general custom. The general custom of the people is what Shaykh al-Islam is saying. Um, and this is, this is what is illustrated by the Quran. He says, similar to the statement where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلَ مِثْلَ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِمَعْرُوفِ where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the ayat, and they are upon, meaning these women, they, they will get similar to what uh, the other women will get from ma'roof, from what is, you know, going back to the order, going back to the custom, going back to the, what is good and what is from the, the, the general tradition and custom. So here we're learning that uh, these things, they go back to, uh, they go back to the custom. So, so to stipulate things in relation to the custom of that people. And then also in the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, where he said uh, to Hind, who was not, she was, was not receiving the amount of what was sufficient for her and her child from her husband. Her husband was being cheap. So the Prophet وسلم, said to her, So the Prophet وسلم, said, Take what is sufficient for you and your child from ma'roof. And ma'roof here, it, mean, it doesn't mean uh, necessarily goodness, but ma'roof meaning according to the orf, according what is the custom. So that shows us that these things, Shaykh al-Islam is, is trying to illustrate for us from the Qur'an and the Sunnah that these issues, as far as amounts, they go back to what is the custom of the people. So a woman, if she's going to stipulate these uh, things, some things in her marital contract, or the man stipulates things in the marital contract, it goes back to the orf. You know, he can't say, I want 17 massages every day. 
or whatever. But he, he might say, I want a massage every day, and this is not something that's going to be very difficult upon her. So he she can fulfill that. Or she says, I want, I want to have relations every day. I'm a very uh, excited woman and a very hot woman, so to speak. Akramakum Allah. So she has the right, and according to the orf, but for her to stipulate, I want it 10 times a day and things like this, no. But instead it will go back to the general custom uh, uh, of the society or, or what have you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And everything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan.